We're very happy that you're here with us today. Welcome, bloggers. We have a special guest, a special treat. We have some wines. We're going to be going on a trip down to Chile, 5,000 miles south by the glass. And we're going to do that first here with the wines that are in front of us. Gran Reserva Seri Riberas. Say that. Perfect. Yeah, Seri Riberas. Yeah, sounds that's wonderful. Perfect. So yes. we're going to do it with the Sauvignon Blanc first. And uh, I think before we get into this Sauvignon Blanc, everyone. Get your palate around it, smell it, really get involved with the wine. I know that everyone's tasting these. And, and earlier we had someone note that they, they noticed a lot of grassy notes in here. No. Um, almost no, uh, citrus note. Yes, a more lima, citrus note. But it's, they, it's a big difference with another Sauvignon Blanc. Mm -hmm. the, the principal characteristic in another Sauvignon Blanc is a very um, vegetal or mm -hmm. glass, grass uh, note. Grassy. Uh -huh. But this is a more citrus. More, more, more citrus more driven. But in a, in a mouth, it's a very interesting, but it's a very density, okay. but no loss, the fresh. This is a, this is a characteristic for Gran Reserva, Sierra Rivera, Sauvignon Blanc. So it's the freshness that is one of the hallmarks of these wines. Uh, we have, we have a, a comment here, 50 states of wine is saying that it's, it's very light in the color. You know, they, they did notice that same sort of perhaps an herbaceous nose or vet, uh, sort of a grassy nose, but very crisp, like you said, yeah. very fresh. I noticed a distinct amount of minerality here. Is that, is that something that if you had to characterize Chilean Sauvignon Blanc versus maybe some of the Sauvignon Blancs that some of our bloggers might have had, New Zealand, especially domestic here in California, what, what would you say are the differences in, in Chilean Sauvignon Blanc uh, from from those types from New Zealand or, or uh, other? The, the, I think it's the principal difference is uh, the, the uh, a green note. In, in Chile, it's a, 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 a little green note, a, a, a little touch, mm -hmm. a green note, but the, the density in a, in a mouth is a special. It's a more density. So it's the yeah, richness, but, that yeah, full yeah, but sort of weight. No loss, the fresh. It is, uh, this is the characteristic. And principal for the Gran Reserva. So it's a bit of a balancing act. You can be rich, you can be dense, but you still have to be light on your toes. You have to be fresh, you have to have zest. And that's actually what Amateur Wino is saying, how these have a lot of zest and rarest, racy acidity. Um, but also that same sort of, we hear people refer to gooseberry and, and sort yeah. of things. I know that, so this vineyard here, it's, it's, in, um, it's in the Rappel Valley. Yeah. How do you pronounce the vineyard's name? Uh, Ukuker. Ukuker no. is the name. That's going to be difficult for you. Yeah. You want to you try that one more? Ukuker. <laughs> Ukuker. Sounds beautiful Ukuker. to me. <laughs> um, you know, so is there a certain type of soil type in this vineyard? Yeah, the, the, this, this vineyard is very characteristic. It's a picture in a, in a, in a kit. It's a very close to the river. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the more close vineyard to the river. The okay. more influence for the, for the, for the, for the wind, cold wind. So I think and we have another, and then another uh, vineyards for the Grand Reserva. The video that we have, yeah, if you look amazing. actually on the, I think it's the blog post page, we have a beautiful video yeah. That, yeah. that sort of showcases, in some cases, uh, animated, then it goes yeah. into all of a sudden the, being the, the actual the, footage. Yeah. This is the one that really stands out as probably the highest yeah. uh, elevation, that gorge about, I think it said 600, 500, 600 feet, yeah. give or take. And, and yeah. so it's, that gives you an idea of what these places look like, this proximity to the water and then how it, how it really, uh, you know, it really changes the way that the flavors develop yeah. in your glass, but still, like you said, a lot of raciness, zesty. The minerality is so striking mm -hmm. to me on yeah. this wine. And it, this spray is also interesting because this wine comes from areas that other wineries from Chile were not uh, sourcing wine, mm -hmm. grapes. Uh, Contitura is the first one going yeah. into these areas, yeah. and you see the river bank or the or the the, the river banks yeah. in order to mm -hmm. harvest grapes from there. Wonderful. You know, and it's, I think that was part of the, the thing that we talked about earlier before, before we started off. I had the behind the scenes uh, chat with you guys. I know Conchi Toro has been looking, this is part of a um, sort of forward thinking project, right? Essentially looking for sustainability of climate in areas that whether you believe in global warming or not or climate change, what, what we are aware of is that in the next few years, we are in a sort of a warmer period. And so I think the yeah. projection of a climate study said it was going to go up in temperature a little bit. And so these vineyards are, they're, they're, they're in an area where they're a little more combative to that or they're better to retain that freshness? Uh, this area is a, a two way. This is uh, more fresh for the wind mm -hmm. and more fresh for the, 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 the cold weather in a night, mm -hmm. permanence in this area, for this more low the, in, a, in a ground. But, it, but this is a, a special, and in this area is a six gray, uh, degrees Greece? less lower, lower than, than another area. Okay, and so because of that cool area and because of that proximity, we have a wine that is mineral with a little bit yeah. of uh, almost like a spice note to it, a little bit of a sort of a nice herbaceous. It almost makes me think of oysters. I know we saw someone that mentioned that earlier. Mm -hmm. um, I apologize, I don't 
have your name, but I know someone was right on with the oyster comment. This would be beautiful. In yeah. Chile, you have a lot of fresh seafood, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Every day. So it's just one of those things where you hear someone say drink and pair locally. You know, it, someone noted too the pepper mark. I think it's Wine Review noted that, uh, or uh, Laura, Laura was mentioning that it, the pepper mark was on the mark there. They, you said though earlier, like a little bit of a spice uh, to the wines that was unique to Chilean mm -hmm. Sauvignon Blanc, correct? Yeah, I think that was. And then uh, Dan God, one is saying that he loves the pear, the cantaloupe, some lime zest. Uh, basically crisp and tropical. Yeah. Do you notice more tropical notes in no, the no, Sauvignon no, Blancs? No, no more tropical, yeah, it's more, more citric. More, more yeah, citric, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Some, some wines from Casablanca Valley, for instance, they yeah. do have more, that more tropical. Tropical, tropical notes. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, Food Writer talks that she feels that there's a creaminess to this, almost, uh, you know, we actually sent out, if you recall, there were some recipe pairings initially that went out with these wines, and some, some of our wine bloggers have actually put them together. There was a, a sort of a, a tartare, I think, a salmon tartare with like a curry sauce. She noticed that the creaminess matched, like you said earlier, the weight, the viscosity. It was a perfect food pairing. Yeah. Makes me hungry. I'm ready to. I'm ready to have a little something I to eat. Too. Wine Harlots is saying that they like the viscosity on the yeah, Sauvignon yeah, Blanc. Yeah. Now, is there uh, is that a winemaking step for you, or is that just something the the vineyards bring to us? Uh, it's, a, it's for uh, a little for the winemaking, but the, the, for it's a, in a vineyard, but it's a winemaking. For to put the the uh, uh, end of the fermentation mm -hmm. to put the wine in a, in a, a stainless steel and move the the lees every uh, week. Ah. for three or four months. So it's a so stirring of the leaves. leaves. Yes, the yeast is more uh, um, dulce, more sugroso, sweet. sweet. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, I think we've got through our first wine here. It's, it's going really fast. We'd like to thank you for taking this trip with us by the glass, 5,000 miles south of Chile with the wines of Gran Reserva Sierra Riberas, sir. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> we'll get this right by the end of the night. I'm Nick Solga at Taste Live. This is Marcio Ramirez, winemaker, and Nicolo Hoffer with Conchi Toro. Thank you, gentlemen, for tasting the first wine with us. Salud. Salud. Thank you. Salud. Que lo disfruten.